My name is Katie Hopkins and this is your European Roundup for ATP. At the moment, breaking news, and it's sad and tragic breaking news, out of Germany, a town called Trier. And typically at this time of year, Trier would be home to one of the largest of the German Christmas markets, which, as many of you will know, are kind of world famous Christmas markets. They're not happening this year. But unfortunately, another attack has just happened in that street where the market would normally be held. So as we speak here, um, someone took a car, Range Rover, drove it into pedestrians in that street. Two dead that are known of at the moment, over 10 injured. Um, but as always, it's the views of the passers-by and eyewitnesses that are most telling. Um, very distressing to hear their words talking about a sneaker in the middle of the road and a girl lying dead next to it. Um, and of course, what we always have in these cases is immediate push by police, police and the state-controlled media that nobody is to talk about this, nobody is to share footage on social media and nobody is to speculate as to the cause. Um, which always makes one rather suspicious. They're also pushing very hard that it was committed by a 51-year-old German national. Although, of course, the interpretation of what is a German national these days, or even a European national, uh, is always something that makes me, uh, you know, lift my eyebrows um, and be highly sceptical of what we're about to be told. Um, I think for German people and all of us around Europe, two things. Um, one, it's a reminder, a horrible reminder of the attack in 2016, at the Christmas market in Berlin where 12 were killed by a Tunisian asylum seeker whose uh, asylum case was rejected. Um, so it just is a memory of that. Uh, and there were other cases too, of course. So that story is unfolding now, but essentially a little town in Germany where there would be a Christmas market on the 1st of December, uh, starting the advent countdown, um, somebody takes a car and rams it into pedestrians as they go about their daily lives. Um, and of course, that is very much the truth of Europe as we stand. And what I expect to see now, of course, is, is hashtags, pray for Trier and tea lights. And the thing about hashtags and tea lights is they don't solve anything. They never say never again. The second uh, thing I wanted to talk to you about and bring to you is a much better news item. Uh, and that is it's the story, in a way, of, of one brave lady, a lady called Kira Bell. And she has gone to the High Court and won a victory, I think, actually, for mums and dads everywhere. Um, she, at the age of 16, was going through a difficult period, was confused and was sent to a clinic. Uh, where she believed she thought she wanted to transition from female to male. And she was, I guess, not pushed down that road, but certainly applauded and encouraged to transition from female to male at the age of 16. And after a three-hour appointment, she was given puberty blockers and started that transitioning process. At the age of 20, she underwent a horrific double mastectomy because she was still on that journey to transition to a man and she now believes with all her heart that was wrong for her and so she's taken this to the high court and won a massive victory today three judges have found that those children children under the age of 16 with gender dysphoria or I would say the phrase who are confused about their place in the world and what they are and what they want to be they are unlikely to be able to give informed consent to undergo treatment. So it will mean that puberty blockers cannot be prescribed to under 16 year olds or a 16 year old after a three hour appointment. And I think, um, you know, this will have global ramifications. This will be new law that will mean and will go to protect other children. But I think what an amazing thing this girl has done not only to go through that horrific process and physical, brutally physical process in her life, but to have the courage then to go on, to call out the adults that were supposed to protect her and to do something to protect other children.
that might suffer the same. I just I just want to cheer her on. I think what a tremendous individual. So Kira Bell, um, absolutely a, a hero now of mine, and she has made it the law that under 16s are unlikely to be able to give informed consent to take puberty blockers. She has made it effectively harder or it will be more rigorous, the process, which will stop other children being pushed down a route by people who have really sold their soul to the whole trans mafia. Um, so I just I just love this. And I suppose from a mother's perspective, I'm cheering her on because I know that my children will have their own choices to make. Uh, but certainly we don't need adults trying to pressure children down a certain route because it's their chosen cause. And the final story I wanted to bring you from the UK is a much more uh, jovial one, in fact, because of course it's the madness of lockdown. You will know maybe that the UK has been in lockdown for seemingly ever. We're now moving out of lockdown tomorrow, uh, which will be the 2nd of December, whenever you see this. And we're going to go into a new tier system. Um, but the tier system is you know, I've given the analogy that if it was a wedding cake with tears, it would be just a really awful wedding cake because there's only two tears and we're all in the worst ones. There's hardly anybody in the OK tier. Essentially, we moved to a point where 99% of people still aren't allowed to do anything. And just to give um, some illustration of the bonkers uh, nature of this, in Wales, um, pubs are going to be allowed to be open but they're not allowed to sell drinks. <laughs> and the alcohol industry has said, you know, it's an insult to the industry. And of course it is. It's a bit like there was an example where shisha bars, you know, those smoking bars could open, but they're not allowed to sell shisha. Well, now the Einsteins that are in politics have said pubs in Wales can open, but they can't sell drinks. <laughs> and in the UK, in England rather, um, you're only going to be allowed to buy a drink in a pub if you have a substantial meal. <laughs> and the funny thing, of course, is if you start to make up rules and irrational rules, if you try and be rational about them, you can't. So this is all about the Scotch egg. I don't know if Americans are aware of a Scotch egg. <laughs> it's an egg wrapped in meat. That doesn't sound very appealing at all, I know. But it looks like this. Can I show you the picture? That's a Scotch egg. It's an egg wrapped in meat. Do you do, you do such a thing? <laughs> so there's a debate happening in the UK about whether a Scotch egg, an egg wrapped in meat, is a substantial meal. Because what we're trying to work out is what do we have to order in order to be able to be allowed to have a drink in a pub in the UK? Because once you start putting bonkers rules in, people do bonkers things. And of course, what do you get as the headline? 10 pints of lager. That's a kind of standard British bar order. And a scotch egg, please. <laughs> so it's, you know, I suppose there is a sort of British spirit going on here where we're sort of saying to the politicians, OK, you make up your bonkers rules and we'll make up our own bonkers way around them. That's a little scotch egg there perched. If you're wondering what that is, that's the egg wrapped in meat. If you happen to bump into a British person anytime soon and they have a scotch egg in their pocket, you'll know it's because we've got bonkers COVID rules and that's the only way we're allowed to get a drink in a bar. Anyway, that's the update from me, Katie Hopkins, for ATP. To get more updates just like this, uh, completely free, sent to your phone in the US, all you have to do is text the letters K-T-H, my name, K-T Hopkins, K-T-H, uh, to this number, which is 88202. So if you use the number 88202 and you text the letters K-T-H, uh, you will be subscribed to ATP. We welcome you and your friends to our family. And all we're trying to do is share the truths that we see uh, in order to best build networks that we can protect. So do text KTH to the number 88202. And I look up forward to catching up with you and Barry on our Friday show.